All right, good morning, everyone. I want to welcome all of you to TriStar's webinar on model search. Uh, my name is Brian E. Nabnet. I'm the VP of Customer Success for TriStar. And we're also uh, ha have our partner, uh, our strategic partner on, on the line. Um, and, and we're going to run through model search. Okay. And so uh, we want to definitely welcome all of you to this call. Uh, model search is, is definitely a unique tool. Uh, and and you, I think you guys will all see the power that this tool brings to, to us. And uh, what TechSoft done is to, to really enhance this tool greatly to work with Winchell and, and Creo. So I just uh, also want to let you guys know that there's obviously you guys are, are all registered for um, to win a laptop as you join this webinar. Um, so our marketing team has done a great job in setting up all of that. And you guys will get notified of that as well. Okay. And so what, what we're going to do um, is uh, obviously have all of you guys on mute for now. Okay. And so if you, any of you have any questions, please use, please put that into the go to meeting and we'll, we'll review those questions and make sure we address them. Uh, we will have a question and answer session at the end. So if you guys want to hold your question and ask it live in front of the group, you guys are more than welcome to do that as well. So I, I want to welcome uh, TechSoft to, to, to the webinar and allow them to go ahead and start the presentation. So Gerhard, if you want to go ahead and take control, that'd be great. Yep. Thank, thank you very much, Brian, for the warm welcome and good, good morning to the uh, United States in this morning. So we are uh, presenting out of, of Europe. Uh, TechSoft, we are located in Austria. Right now it's 5 p.m. our time. So we have a little bit snow outside there. We are close to the Alps uh, and uh, more than happy to show you now uh, and today the model search solution. What, what, what is model search all about? I will talk about uh, that stuff. My name is Gerhard Schwab. I'm responsible here as a partner sales manager for all of our TechSoft add-on solutions for the PTC portfolio. And my colleague, Daniel Hinger, uh, and also you can see to the name also now a little bit our, our face so that it's more family to, to you, uh, who we are and what we are doing and uh, what have we planned. So just for your information, we as a group working uh, since a, a longer period together with TriStar very successfully. So we as TechSoft also a platinum partner as a PTC reseller and so we have a lot of larger uh, customers who are like to go global where the headquarter is anywhere in one of the uh, countries where we and our partners are taking care about, for example, a windshield implementation and rolling that out globally. That gives us as well the opportunity that we see a lot of additional uh, needs within our install base. And so we are working very successful together in bringing all that stuff together. Uh, from our side, we are doing product development since 91 with an own product development organization within our team. And uh, we have uh, 16 people who are doing add-on product development to the PTC portfolio. That means we have uh, add-on solutions in the cut area and as well in the PLM area. Uh, for the today's presentation, we will focus on the model search, so we go in deep dive there. Uh, most of you maybe are using the so-called PAD library, or we call it Solid Power. That is one of the application which is also in the PTC price book if you are a Creo Elements Direct Modeling user, so coming from the former co-create environment, and also this application we are offering for the Creo parametric area there, it's called Creo Engineering Tools. Also, we have a solution in our pocket uh, which our uh, users from the administrative side and as well uh, from other departments uh, really loves. It's called iPrint. Uh, iPrint is a really very, very strong solution for printing and plotting all of your drawings what you have. So, for example, if you have a large assembly in your windshield environment, you just can push a button and you get all the drawings in a list 
also with all the 3D view -ables, and you can decide where you'd like to print it. You also can scale it, you can downsize it, you can stamp the drawings with just push pushing one button and as well you can zip the file and send it out for example maybe uh, to some of your manufacturing partners. Finally but not least we are also providing manufacturing execution system solutions where we bring uh, all the 3D geometric information streamlined to the shop floor so we are doing post processors for Creo manufacturing and all the other solutions which are needed to be successful on, on that site. But that should be more or less enough information just that you understand who we are, what we are doing, where we are. Uh, today we are showing our, our newest and really revolutionary solution. It's called Model Search and within the product name there is at least a little information what it is all about. So when we started with Model Search five years ago, we had a lot of customers and prospects uh, which were uh, forcing us uh, because they say, we'd like to have a solution where we very, very easy can find 3D cut model which we already have designed. But we don't want to search for them. We also don't know maybe the name. We don't have an information on which project it was was uh, used, but maybe I can remember a little bit uh, what was the geometrical information or what was the geometrical uh, perspective. Uh, so uh, we uh, collected all these informations and what we have seen on the marketplace, there was no solution provider who has an integral solution to the PTC portfolio. That means uh, really using Creo native information and as well that it is more or less windshield native. Uh, so we brought all the information together and our product development team were able within one year to create this first model search release in the release one that was 2011. Uh, since then we are on the market and for sure first on our home market so we are growing out of uh, central European area that means Austria, Germany and Switzerland and now we have more than 150 customers in the European area. Uh, what is really the differentiator and you can see that a little bit uh, also within the information of our, our first customer that is uh, an excerpt of uh, some customers. Uh, the interesting point is that we have it within all the different industries. So we have uh, automotive, we have uh, motorcycle, uh, OEMs, we have a lot of OEM suppliers, uh, we have uh, very small companies as well, like you can see in the center here, Rollstar, it is a, a Swiss based company who are doing machinery, they are just 10 people in this organization, but Model Search gives them a lot of value and payback, so they use it very, very professional. Uh, we are also in the medical device area, so for example we have Otto Bock in Germany, Austria and uh, Switzerland as customer here. Uh, the Liebherr group uh, within uh, a lot of different sites. Uh, just an, another example, also in the aircraft industry with Bucher Leichbau also located in, in Switzerland and uh, a lot of different others. So uh, what have we planned for, for today? And we want to bring it very fast up to attention. What I have got from TriStar as, as an information is that most of you are used to work on a daily business with Creo Parametric and as well with Windchill. And that's all what you have to know. Everything is seamlessly integrated in your day-to-day -day business. And uh, so I'd like at this point to hand over the presentation to my colleague, to Daniel Hinger. He will show you model search live and after this 30 minutes presentation, we will do a summarize and uh, share the highlights. And uh, for sure, we are more than happy then to answer your questions as well. Thanks for your attention. And now I hand it over to Daniel so that he can share his screen and his live application that works very well. Thank you very much, Daniel. 
it's all yours. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Gerhard. So, my name is Daniel Hinger. Um, I'm with Techsoft in Austria um, since 2004 and I'm an applications engineer for the Creo Parametric and the Windshield portfolio and also responsible to showing you model search live and in action. Um, so, first of all, um, I would like to show you or a little bit of agenda here. I would like to show you model search on different perspectives. So first of all, maybe I'm a design engineer and I'm working with my Creo Parametric um, and try to um, put out as, as many parts as, it, uh, um, as I have to do. Uh, and the second part, I would like to show you model search with Winchell and the Winchell integration. So maybe I don't have to uh, using a a CAD system to uh, benefit from model search. Okay, so first of all, I'm, as I said, I'm a design engineer and I try to uh, create a new part. I've got a part in mind. Maybe it looks like uh, this in this little picture here. Um, and what I typically do, uh, I will create a new part and I'm connecting to my windshield database, obviously. And I will uh, start with some uh, simple features. For example, I'm doing a sketch here and um, I'm working here with millimeters. Uh, as you know, Europe is, is millimeters, but model search will also work um, with inches and pounds as well, so uh, no problem on, on this side. Um, and maybe I can create a simple feature here. Um, so this is the first one, nothing fancy. Some, something is popping up in my right-hand corner. I will ignore this for now. And maybe we can do um, a second feature and doing a second sketch. Maybe I throw in the center line. Um, maybe I can mirror this geometry down to the bottom and give some dimensional values as well. So nothing special from this side. So and yeah, maybe putting here 70 millimeters for the length. Okay, perfect. Um, and when I hit finish um, and, and finish up this feature, uh, model search is coming up with this model search live. So basically, uh, model search is doing a geometric similarity search from what I've on my screen through the whole Winchell database. Okay, and um, uh, I'm uh, authenticated with my windshield username so it only brings up the, the result I supposed to see so um, no hassle on this side as well and what I can see here okay I've got here a similar part um, which is 95% similar to this what I've, I've got on screen so this is a clear parametric part the second one uh, will be an inventor part from Autodesk and the SolidWorks part as well, so we can deal with uh, different CAD systems here as well. Um, and for example, when when I uh, close this down for now, and maybe I can put in some some more features, maybe a chamfer here, um, and maybe I can put here a, a hole in there as well. So. Just a little circle, make this 25, 25, so it's easy to remember, and like this. Um, you will see Model Search Live will recalculate this result, and now I'm uh, to 98% similarity. Okay, what, what, what we uh, can do now is, uh, obviously, we can um, review this in Windchill. We can just click on it and um, open it in my Creo Parametric application. And uh, what I can do now is, obviously, I can measure, measure it and investigate this part. And when this part will fit my needs well, perfect, um, I avoid a, a duplicate and save a lot of time and money. Um, when it's not that right, maybe also good, I can just copy it along with the drawing, I can make some changes, I have not to deal with all the detailing and the surface finishing and the tolerances and so on, and well, that's also good, I've saved a lot of time. So directly integrated in my uh, Creo parametric here with Model Search Live. Um, I can configure this Model Search Live and for 
for demo purposes, um, I'm using um, uh, so that every time I regenerate the part, model search life will come up and give me some results. Um, on a daily business, I would say uh, we can um, hit uh, or, or bring this interval to a high level. So uh, this is not annoying me, not helping me. That's the that's the best uh, thing. Um, and for example, I can put this on a second screen. I can resize it and so on. Maybe I can say uh, the threshold, so results should only come up when it's above 80% or something like that. So um, as a design engineer, I can configure this application um, so it does not bother or annoy me, okay? Perfect, so um, maybe we can do a second, a quick second part here as well. So uh, maybe I'm using uh, this time a sheet metal part and designing a sheet metal part, um, what I do is just throw the two lines in my sketch, maybe 100 millimeters and 30 millimeters, and yeah, for example, 100 millimeters in length here, um, and model search live will bring up um, another result, hopefully, or is it model search live? Or is it model search live? Okay, so maybe I've misconfigured it, so the time interval is a little bit too high for now, so leave this. Um, let's talk about how it's done. Um, well, it's not feature dependent, first of all. So, for example, when I'm, uh, or it does not matter how I create this part. And to show you this, um, we can import a step file. So maybe I, I've got a step file from a supplier, download it from the home page, and of course I can import this to my Creo parametric, and what I get here is just the import feature. Okay, so no features here. And what model search is doing, um, it gathers all the geometric information from this model. So basically there are about 40 parameters, so the dimensional parameters from the bounding box or the moments of inertia or the number of planar surfaces and cylindrical surfaces and the mass properties and so on. And all this uh, footprint is stored um, in a different database on the model search, model search server. So we do not touch your data or convert your data or um, um, uh, bring this data in the windshield database, we store it on, in a separate place, okay, basically. Um, and um, I've got the direct integration in here as well, so maybe I can um, uh, have a look at the similar parts uh, directly in my work group manager, in my internal browser, web browser here. Oh, there is model search live, let's see. Uh, for a second, six hits. Let's apply this, should work. And what I get here, obviously, is a native windshield table inside my uh, pre parametric web browser. And as you can see, I get similar results to this, what I've uh, on my screen in my CAD application. Well, I talked about we do not need a CAD application to use model search. Um, so maybe I can switch the roles and uh, jump into Windchill using uh, a web browser. And let's say I'm in a manufacturing department or, or purchasing department, uh, and I have to do a price estimation for this part I've got on screen, or I have to, to middle and drill it and do basic manufacturing stuff here. And maybe I can remember, okay, I've got a similar part to this one. Uh, I can't remember anything of it. Um, I've got no part number or, or, some, or, or, or a naming, stuff like this. But what I can do inside my windshield, I can use this search similar models button here. So I do not have to uh, use a cat application, I can use it as a windshield user. And when I hit this, um, obviously I get uh, a result, and this result is tightly integrated into Windchill as well, so I've got my search and browse tab, and we've added uh, another tab 
here called model search and uh, what you can see is the search result and you can do all the good stuff um, with windshield tables. So of course you can uh, configure this, um, you got this little um, uh, preview, you can filter it, you can sort it and stuff like this. Um, and for example I've got a similar part uh, here and um, maybe we can use our gallery view to um, have a look at on side by side and investigate the differences. Um, maybe you can use a Creo view as well. So Creo view have a, a compare part functionality which is um, pretty good. Um, but in this case I'm just using this gallery view and what I can see now is okay I've got on the left side this little extrude thing here and on the right side I do not have this one. And what's what does this mean to me? Well, as a manufacturing user, for example, um, I maybe can reuse most of my NC programming or my fixtures or my clamping and stuff like that. And so model search can save me a lot of time uh, in manufacturing or purchasing as well. Good, perfect. Um, let's jump to the next thing. Um, first of all, I um, would like to talk about uh, duplicates or exact uh, copies from your parts in your windshield environment. Um, and when I hit this duplicate button here, uh, basically the search is already done and what I get now are groups of geometrically identical parts in my windshield database. For example, um, this group here, um, they are basically uh, rectangular tubes and what's happened here is um, maybe the design engineer just copied the whole assembly, give it a new name and what I get here are geometrically exactly the same parts. Okay, And now I can decide is this a good or a bad duplicate I would say. Um, we can export it to Excel and process it outside from windshield for example and um, what is a good or a bad duplicate so a good one is um, maybe uh, different material or coloring or surface finishing things. So it's uh, basically okay. Uh, but in this case there are obviously bad duplicates because they are geometrically exactly the same and I think this uh, rectangular tube can be set to, um, uh, to another life cycle state for example to prevent further using. Okay. Um, let's talk about how to find these similar models exactly. Uh, for example, I've got here um, an, an part that looks like this. So it's a sheet metal part, two bands. And um, when I search for similar models, you can see um, I've got a few of this in my database. Maybe there is a cutout on the flange or stuff like this. Um, and there are all also the same size. Um, knowing, okay, there have to be different sizes in my database as well, but I get not the result. So why is this? Um, because we are using different weightings on our attributes. So we are we have about 40 attributes, but to search for, for a specific model, you don't have to use all of these attributes. And in this case, I'm using just a few of it. Um, as you can see, this is our course weighting, I would say. And basically what we are doing here is the bounding box dimension. So um, how big is this part? And um, maybe I can set this to um, a finer weighting set and what's basically in there are uh, additional information, so the number of planar surfaces and cylindrical surfaces and the surface area. So the bounding box um, gets less important for the similarity search. Okay? And when I'm using this weighting for the search, I get a similar search result, but I get also much longer part um, which have uh, the same whole pattern, I would say. Okay, 
Um, and so we can um, narrow down our search and adapt or configure it to your needs and to your parts. So maybe you are in different industries and um, the parts are, uh, will vary very um, uh, strong, I would say, and so we can configure it to your needs as well. Um, and, of course, I can use this information or these attributes um, and can search uh, these attributes directly. So what we've implemented here is our so-called parameter search, okay? And what I can do here is um, I can search for all of these attributes and we can uh, add attributes from WindChill or other systems, external systems and external attributes or parameters as well. Um, and um, I can start the query to use this um, for my search. Okay. And um, for example, I've got here a, another picture. Um, maybe I've got this picture from a colleague um, and uh, he's on customer side and doing some servicing stuff and maybe this part has to be replaced, okay? I don't know anything about this part, but what I can see here is, okay, I can guess how big this part is. I can see, okay, there's a large and two small holes, I would say, and maybe I can use this information um, to find this part in my windshield database. Okay, for the sake of time, I've uh, saved this search for now, and what I'm basically doing here is I can um, guess roughly the size, so maybe it's 250 to 350 millimeters long and so on, and uh, maybe we can use this uh, information from the hole, so there are three holes in there, and maybe they've got this size and so on, um, and when I'm using this, um, I get a pretty good search result. So um, when I get through the search results, I would say, okay, this first one is not that good. Um, this one also uh, not quite that part I'm looking for. But when I um, see the last two um, results here, um, they are maybe exactly or the exact parts I'm, I'm looking for. Maybe I can show this side by side again. Okay, and so the only difference are the number of holes and I've got two parts and can narrow down uh, which part my colleague is, is needed at customer side. Okay, so very powerful to use um, uh, this uh, parameter search to find my models in my windshield database. And of course you can save these uh, queries and searches and um, I've got the a few examples here, for example, I can um, look for plates with four holes, okay, so basic stuff. Um, and when I search through my windshield database um, and where is it? <clears throat> what I get here are plates with four holes, obviously, okay, so very, very easy. Uh, maybe we can do a um, a little bit complicated stuff here, so I've got some clamps, okay, and I've got a clever mixture of uh, planar surfaces and cylindrical surfaces in there. And when I search it, what I get are stuff that look like clamps, okay. So very powerful um, to save these searches and reuse it later, um, so the administrator can uh, can save the searches, so every, basically everybody can, can use them, or as an windshield user I can save my own queries and searches, so I can use them for my personal needs. Last but not least, um, we are only talking about uh, parts so far, but um, of course, model search will work with assemblies as well, okay? And maybe I can show this to you in my Creo environment as well. I will close down some of my windows here. Um, and let's open a small assembly. It's called robot. Yeah, open this up. Just take a few seconds.
Okay, and what I can do now is search for similar assemblies as well. In this case, I'm looking for the whole assembly. Um, I think that's not that useful, but when I'm looking, for example, on this um, little uh, wheel assembly, um, maybe I can grab this and activate it in my Creo environment. I can use this model search tab to um, basically look for similar wheel assemblies. Okay, and what I'm getting here is this is my base part again, and I get all kinds of wheel assemblies um, as a search result. Okay, so it's not that use case that I have assembled with hundreds and thousands of parts um, and and look um, for for similar ones. It's basically okay. I've got an assembly. I would say 20, 50, or 100 parts, and um, look for similar uh, assemblies here as well. Okay, and as you can see, this works pretty well. Okay, good, perfect. Um, I think that's from my side. Did I miss something? I don't think so. So I will if you have the presenter. Okay. Yeah, yeah, very, very, yes, you can hear me? Yeah. Great, great. Thank, thank you very much, Daniel. It was a very, very good presentation. I have seen that we have, in the, in the meantime, uh, several questions. So I will share my screen once, once more with you guys. And give me one second to show the right slide because I won't directly jump jump in in some in some very very good questions what we have uh, got so far. So first first of all, I'd like to answer uh, some questions where what is the what are the prerequisites and how can I use uh, this advantage for my organization or for me as a designer. So uh, first of all, we are offering model search uh, in four different versions, as you can see. Uh, today, what you have seen in our presentation, sorry, wrong button, is model search for PTC Creo Parametric and PTC Windchill. So model search needs always this both application, that means the cut application and the PLM application. Uh, also, we are offering model search in combination for Creo Elements Direct Modeling, the former solid designer with Model Manager. I think also a good news for maybe some of, of, of you in the audience as well. Uh, also, we have right now companies who has upgraded from Model Manager to Windchill. So therefore, also model search is available to support their PTC Creo Elements Direct Modeling Cut environment in combination with PTC Windchill. And uh, our finally last uh, and newest application, and we were able to close the first customer in, in Germany. The organization is called Hellermann Titan. They are an automotive supplier. They are just working with Cadia V5, uh, SolidWorks, and NX, and using Windchill PDM link on three different sites. And they're using now model search for the so-called multi-cut environment in combination with PTC Windchill. Uh, we are just offering and that is really our big advantage of the application in combination with the PTC platform. We are also a PTC development partner, therefore we have all the information and as well we asked PTC with all the product line managers in 2011 before we started with our release number one if PTC has in plan that there will have maybe an own uh, 3D geometrical search engine uh, application in place and we got it written, uh, written from Brian Shepard, uh, from Mike Campbell and Jim Heppelman that they will not have a own uh, 3D geometrical search in the, in the next years. So from an architectural perspective, because there was also two questions related to that, 
uh, how can it be used and uh, what is it all about and uh, and I'd like one question very much because they say wow how fast uh, is model search and uh, how can we do that and we are really proud about that situation because we shared a lot of solutions and evaluated solutions in the marketplace for our customers and well and we have seen that most of the provided solutions have very nice features but on the end of the day they are very hard to administrate all the stuff they have uh, limitations on really their performances and as well uh, from a design perspective it not really is an automatic design support so we decided and brought in this functionality what you have seen that a designer in the engineering department has this so-called model search live automatically design support it is like uh, you are using an, an GPRS system where you just type in your, your, your goal where you like to reach and automatically you get this information even just automatically as design support when you are designing and starting maybe a new project uh, that is uh, very powerful as well if you are working for example with new designers in your organization or you have external people you have design partners uh, maybe they don't know all your projects and all your geometrical part so that is really a very very fast payback on this side so for the GRIO parametric there comes this model search uh, application you can see that uh, in the blue color highlighted on the model search server there is this model search application and it's a native windshield application also there was some questions about that situation uh, what do we use here uh, it's windshield native uh, that's why it's completely integral in windshield in, in your user interface and it's not a separate application or a separate user interface what you have to have uh, very hardly sometimes uh, doing all the administration stuff and get all the 100% security if an update of your windshield environment for example happens that everything uh, working uh, seamlessly and very fine we can uh, absolutely guarantee that we have and that works very fine due to our special architecture uh, we are not uh, doing any installation on the so-called windshield object model how is are now this uh, geometrical footprint uh, are organized and how are they generated in an uh, GRIO parametric with windshield environment we are using the process within the windshield visualization services so whenever uh, your cut worker in your installation are generating the so-called BVSIT file the visualization file then we hook on on this process and within our model search application and automation service we are generating the so-called geometrical footprint information what you have seen from Daniel how it is organized and created the footprint is a uh, part information which has a very 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 low data uh, data environment so this data are stored in the model search server application and uh, here we have also two brand new technologies what we are using first is it's uh, in memory and we have here an application and a secure environment in using really big data so we have one of our yeah, largest applications or installations on customer side is they're having uh, more than 12 terabyte data in their windshield environment uh, have more than three million uh, parts and assemblies in the environment and they are uh, separated on 12 development sites worldwide and we can guarantee that you have if you are using model search no impact on your performance even not on the Creo client side for all the designers and as well on the windshield client sites because uh, model search is also uh, able to use if you are a windshield user as we are highlight or have showed it here on the screen 
for example, in the purchasing department, in manufacturing area, service department, and, and, uh, and different more. Uh, the highlights and the summary before we like to open it up to your questions is once more, uh, model search is fully integrated. That means we are not working with any neutral information. So there's no need in generating neutral data of your card environment. That's the beauty that we can directly use the geoparametric information creating the geometrical footprint. The footprint is also automatically generated. That was one of the reasons why Leapair decided as a group for model search uh, compared to other solutions providers where it's always very hard and uh, really time uh, intense uh, to really doing all the stuff automatically. Uh, so it's stored in this in this stuff. Uh, also, one question: What do I need an additional hardware or an additional server? No. If you have on your windshield server enough capacity, so also this model search data can also store it on the same hardware what we are using for windshield. We have the most of our smaller uh, application or installations, and customers are using that. And also, no manual classification. So maybe you are uh, looking for, for some time on classification solutions. Uh, we have several customers which have before classification solutions in place. They have replaced these solutions uh, with model search. And as well, we have large company like KTM Sport Motorcycles or like the EMA Group in Italy. Uh, they are using model search in combination with parts link, for example, if you are using a, a classification solution that works very, very fine together. So it's not a, a, a KO criteria or what else. Um, what for you is really important uh, that all what you have seen is fully integrated. So all your users or you by yourself, you don't have really uh, to, to learn and hard new additional application. I think uh, you guys, you all have a lot of applications what you have to uh, use on a day-to-day -day business. So that's enough, we think, and that's why model search is uh, absolutely integral in your daily environment with Geoparametric and Windchill and uh, fully integrated in everything as well. Uh, your ID department will love you and, and us with model search because uh, we can take over all the permissions and all the windshield uh, stuff that you have done within your windshield installation. So all the user rights, all the access rights, everything can be used automatically and that brings us really on speed, not even just in using it, also within the first implementation with the configuration uh, of the product. And so I think nobody is really wondering about uh, we have the first customers, uh, some of them have a return of invest in using model search less than six months, uh, but no organization what we have now sold model search has uh, a longer return on investment period of more than 20 months. And I think that is really uh, awesome. So in summary, everything what you have seen is, is over here. And uh, Daniel, I'd like to ask you uh, as well on the question area. When you look, I see there are a lot of questions are typed in so that we can focus on these questions and uh, give all, all the answers maybe today. Uh, also, I'd like to bring to your attention in the hands out area, uh, there are three documents where you find additional information due to uh, the prerequisites, the platform support, what is needed. Uh, and as well the customer information, what you have seen uh, in that stuff. And as well, the session is recorded and TriStar will uh, bring a download uh, to your attention. And as well, the shown slide, you will have them tomorrow uh, in, your, in your hands. Okay, so uh, Brian, I don't know if you'd like to open now the webinar 
up to also live questions for us that is that is fine and in the meantime I will look on questions what are coming in so that we maybe maybe we can share more information yeah I see there was one uh, additional question it was related uh, to the license model how is model search licensed licensed sorry I can, I can also show that just give me one second I go back to this one slide because then I think it's uh, is, uh, the easiest way to understand how it works so uh, model search is licensed and I have seen in the registration list there are some companies uh, which almost maybe on the European uh, side almost using one of our solutions even iPrint or model search or almost in combination I have seen that somebody from Komatsu for example is there so the Komatsu Hanumak group in Germany for example is using model search and uh, model search is licensed floating what does that mean so whenever you as an engineer or as a windshield user start and uh, as a named user when you start a model search license uh, this license is within your uh, use and if you don't work with model search for a period longer than 20 minutes it's automatically free for a next windshield named user so uh, that's why we for example if you have uh, a design uh, installation with uh, maybe 50 users five zero users uh, you not would have a need of 50 model search licenses uh, like right now we have a ratio of roughly 75 percent uh, compared to the cut users and on the windshield side we have roughly an average within all the installations of roughly 50 to 60 percent of windshield users uh, so much model search licenses then also in, in use so there was also one stuff yeah uh, one question was as well how long would this take the model search life if the common space includes millions of cut objects Maybe you can answer the question, Daniel. Uh, yeah, of course. <coughs> I would uh, run through some questions as, as well. I think some of them can be very um, can be quickly answered. So, um, how does this search, or how long does this search take? Uh, well, basically, the search is done in um, tenth of a second or under a second and basically the search result uh, or the rendering of the search re results will take longer so um, regardless of um, um, of your of your uh, parts um, it will take only uh, a tenth of a second or half a second or a second and basically render this um, result in this wind chill um, environment and render it on the web browser um, will take longer so we are using an in-memory technology here so we are using um, roughly one gigabyte of RAM per uh, 100,000 models so for example when you got one million models you have to have uh, uh, 10 gigabytes of RAM uh, um, and um, as you know uh, RAM is very fast and so the search is very fast as well um, so um, yeah I think that will answer this question um, very, very I've got good. some uh, maybe I can pick out another one uh -huh. um, there is a question if we've got a, a batch process to to basically gather this geometrical footprint and, and store it in our virtual visualist uh, in our uh, model search server um, yeah we can uh, basically we are using the windshield visualization services so um, in Europe we say cat worker so you've got uh, your Creo uh, visualization services on, on the windshield server and you can do uh, um, a queue uh, for example using the latest version or iteration from a model and queue it so that um, the visualization services can run through it and um, do a visualization and what we can or we can use this and leverage this and um, 
basically get the footprint during the visualization so there is no hard work on your side I would say so it's basically done automatically in the background um, I've got another question oh there's so many questions um, yeah, very good. <laughs> Um, one of the first question was, can model search be ran from um, uh, from the network or a network drive? Um, I would say yes. Um, not quite sure about the model search live application. I think uh, it has to be uh, locally on the machine, but I'm not sure. Um, since we are using um, the standard um, um, the standard APIs from uh, provided by PTC, so uh, the JLink and Toolkit uh, applications interface and so on. Um, I think it will, will be no problem to run it from a network drive as well. Um, we talked about licensing. Okay. Uh, in the in the meantime, Daniel, if you if you like, I would uh, share the screen once more with you. If you can be so kind and show and show this uh, multi. Uh, visualization uh, stuff because there are some questions related to the visualization and how does it work in combination with with Creo view uh, the multiple uh, stuff okay. I share the screen once more with you so the and question was the scalar view or exactly view. exactly that we can show once more okay so okay. The beauty of the solution is that for sure we are using PTC standard technology within this application so that that is the stuff that you are really uh, get very fast similar and very fast up to speed so we have some customers uh, which even don't uh, ask for a training for model search yeah? normally we would uh, recommend at least four to five hours training so as you can see here, you get this uh, multi-gallery view, and within this multi-gallery view, that is pure uh, Creo view, so Creo view MCAT, and that also gives an opportunity, if you like, that with a full Creo view MCAT license, you also then can do an uh, and check where are really the the, diff the difference of the stuff here. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I can show this in Creo view as well. Um, yeah. So this is the gallery view. Uh, works out of the box. Very cool stuff, and you have access to all the information stored in the windshield database, like the number, the name, the version, and so on. Um, and maybe I can show this Creo view thing. Um, you know, maybe on this part. basically pre few stuff so there's nothing um, from TechSoft in there but maybe we can uh, show this part directly in Creo view um, and we are using the Creo view MCAT thing here oh, God, lost this license server again why is it doing this to me so let's try this Okay, so I've got my Creo view up and running, and maybe I can um, add another part to this Creo view session. Um, yeah, add it to the current one, and I've got uh, two parts in here. And what you can do now in Creo view uh, MCAT is uh, on the tools you got this compare options, and maybe you can set the first and the second part. Um, so there is this. Uh, Preview is killing me. Why is this not working? Ah, here it is. Okay, so first and second and compare it. So, um, okay, good. And what you can see here is basically this attribute area. So preview can show you the differences, and um, of course you can. Um, configure this search result so maybe you can hide the first part and only show the intersections and with different coloring as you can see. Um, but that's basically Creo view uh, basic stuff we can do with the Creo view and cut license. Yeah. Very good. Thank thank you very much Daniel. I like to come to, to the last to the last questions. Uh, we will stay in time and uh, being r ready uh, bef before uh, 
uh, it was planned. Uh, but I think there are two or three really very important questions as well. One of them was how are the geometrical footprint are generated? And I change the, the presenter once more to, to, to my screen, Daniel, so that I can show that on the, on the, on the screen. So most of our, of our customers prefer that they are generating the footprints whenever a new model, for example, is released to manufacturing. So you have maybe milestones uh, within your windshield uh, installation and whenever also this new visualization format is generated then as well this the footprint is generated. But also you can do that manually within your Creo application that you also get a roughly gut feel so it depends on how a 3D cut model is uh, designed uh, between uh, 1 to 1.5 seconds the generation of a geometrical footprint uh, takes time. So within the first initial installation, uh, there we have a batch process in the background that every 3D model what you have in your database, uh, the geometrical footprint generation is done. And so that uh, very, very fast you can use the model search because it also or it just makes sense if you really have all your cut models then with this footprint available so that automatically this model search live application works and as well the other ones. There was also another question related to uh, is it possible that I can bring additional information for example uh, like parameters uh, within parts in my windshield and also can use that uh, as a search. So I'd like to answer that on, on that way we have customers for example they say I'd like to, to uh, if I find model which have uh, from a geometrical similarity perspective a very close fit, I'd like to know is this part for example on store? Yeah, And uh, so we can add in the search attributes from external systems that could be out of an ERP system or as well if you are using in the windshield installation also the so-called VTIP, the WD part structure, sorry, uh, then you also can add in, in attributes that could also be a naming for example or what else so that you very fast find that it's more or less a, a, a pre-classification within windshield and you can use that and share this information as well within model search. That is really fine. So. Uh, Thanks to everybody for the very, very positive feedback. We have a lot of comments. Uh, thanks for the presentation, very good. And as well, uh, some of the attendees have seen model search uh, years ago. And gentlemen, you are right. Uh, we have a lot of uh, investments in, in Windchill uh, and it's still, still ongoing. So uh, we are having uh, all six months a new release but you are not forced to, to change on a, on a new release if there is not a need. So for example what you can see here on this customer side, uh, most of the customers uh, brings in sometimes additional uh, needs or would like to have additional functionality. Uh, due to the fact that we are very flexible uh, organization for us it's possible that we sometimes really take care about uh, special customer functionality wishes and uh, can add this to our product development roadmap and bring it in the next uh, uh, first customer shipment solution in there. So we are uh, one minute before we, we close that. Uh, I don't know Brian you are in the background still there? Yes, correct. Yeah, Gerard and, and Daniel, thank you so much for your presentation. It, <clears throat> it was very informative and and I know uh, there are a lot of questions. I want to make sure that we've got we got through all of those uh, and, and we'll do that uh, after this present after this webinar and we'll get in touch with those folks that had a lot of questions and make sure everything was answered. So we will make this recording available as soon as I can get it uploaded um, and and uh, onto our website. You guys will have access to that. I also wanted to uh, say thank you so much to Becca for setting all this up for us 
and uh, for all the attendees taking uh, an hour out of your day to uh, watch this webinar. So we appreciate everybody's time and we will be in touch and talk to you guys soon. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thanks as well and have, have a great day.